What is going on, everybody? How is everybody doing tonight? Let me get this started here on my end. Oh, come on now. Here we go. At some point, we're going to get going here. Sorry, Trent. The, the, the laptop, as I mentioned in like every single live stream, like you guys needed to explain to you, I have to get the laptop, or rather, so that my wife can see it while I ramble on incessantly. I, you, yeah, you are. So let's see if I could figure out a way to keep your uh, helmet purple. Uh, oh my gosh, I've just about said something that I shouldn't have said. If I could find a way to keep uh, your um, metal visage uh, violet forever, I would do that just in your honor. Uh, how's everybody doing on this wonderful Saturday evening? Um, Slicey, that was a lot of fun uh, doing the Knife Junkie Town Hall meeting. I was uh, I was not expecting to be um, sitting there at the same time as uh, Mr. Greg Medford. That was uh, that was a lot of fun. I wish that I had used the um, I wish that I had used that moment to ask him a few more questions, but. Uh, it's probably better that it worked out the way that it did because I would have gone on and on and on and they would have, they would have given me the music and the curtains <laughs> that have played me off. So I'm kind of glad that I didn't go on and on and on here. Um, yes, Shaker, the sigil looks excellent. I've been playing with that a lot. Absolutely. Shaker, help me out here with the Curtis again. This is a new Curtis. And is this a prototype or like a first run? Um, help me out with the information there. Um, yes, it is a Rockstead. Rockstead Higo 2. Um, yeah, only four F-bombs from Greg. He, it was to, you guys probably saw I was having a hard time not losing it. Because he, I mean, he is as as real as it gets. You know, say what you will about him. But, I mean, he's going to say exactly what's on his mind. And I was like, oh, my gosh, this is exactly like watching one of his videos. And I was losing it. I couldn't stop laughing. What's up, Stasa? Um, but yeah, I, I was having so much fun. Um, yeah, the Sonoma, I have been really, really liking this knife. Oh my goodness. The profile on that thing, um, solid titanium, but even still, it still manages to be nice and lightweight, thin profile or narrow profile, I guess. Got my lovely fingerprints all over it. Uh, what's going on? Like the slicey Bowie or the Sleesh Bowie. I keep wanting to call it the Slicey Bowie. The Sleesh Bowie on the table. Yeah, that was sent and it will be unboxed. Um, you'll see the unboxing uh, next week. I'm going to, I'll say the same thing that I said in the unboxing. I never understood. I remember when this was available and I saw the price on it. I was like, what? What's so special about it? And then it kind of disappeared, and then it blew back up. You guys know, secondary market prices on these things, crazy. And I was like, that can't be that special. It can't be. And I unboxed it, and I've been playing with it. And, well, I'm not going to do nearly as good a job as I did in the unboxing, you know, the actual organic response, but I get it. I get it. This thing is <laughs> wonderful. Oh, my gosh. What a masterpiece of a knife. Holy moly. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a word that I never say, right? Ever. Oh, my goodness. What do we got here? Um, my wife actually is beside me, but I look into the comments. It's okay. You don't have to yet. Um, Jonathan Eaton, what's up, brother? Hope you and the family are doing well or doing good. Thank you so much, Jonathan. I really appreciate that. Um, we are doing good. Um, I'm at home with the kids, and I have been teacher for the last, what? It's been three weeks, two weeks, Wait, four weeks. Oh boy, it's been crazy. Um, I've I've been tested, but it's 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 working out. I'm still managing to put out content. Um, the kids are learning some stuff, <laughs> but yeah, we're doing okay. Absolutely, thank you, mate. For, thank you very much. Um, what's up, Andrew? Thanks for coming in. Shaker says Curtis Arrow, and yeah, brand new design, first run. Okay, that makes sense. Um, to step in the right direction as far as evolution of Curtis knives go. Um, but yeah, Zell, thank you so much. <laughs> you just certainly don't have to do that, but thank you. Uh, give the people what they want, MC, or I guess just me in this case. Can we please get the top light out? Um, 
Uh, Zell, I have this thing ready to go for you, buddy. I knew that you were going to pop in and be like, get that thing out. So we're going to, I'll tell you what, here's what we're going to do. We're just going to finagle it in here. It'll be really confusing for anybody who pops in the live stream um, a little bit later. We'll put it right in the middle, right? As it, we're going to emphasize it. How about that? There we go. <laughs> oh, no. Well, <laughs> yeah, that's what they're going to think. You don't need to learn about plants and you know, math and all that stuff. Let me teach you about knives. Let me teach you about powder metallurgy. Um, for anybody watching the live stream right now, if you're watching it in the future and you're seeing these little colored helmets besides people's name, uh, beside people's names in the comment section or the live stream comment section, um, those are helmets associated with my channel membership. Um, that's something that if you want to, you can join up and you'll gain access to the uh, evolving badging system um, that changes colors, you know, as you are, are a member for a longer periods of time. So when you start off, it starts off a of blue, then it jumps to green at a month, it jumps to purple at three months, red at six months, and gold at a year. It's a way of identifying members to me and everybody else. You'll also gain access to the exclusive emojis that you can see here again in the chat, the swords. There's a whole bunch of different ones. Um, we kind of like to raise swords to new members, things like that. So if that's something you're interested in, you can click the little blue outline join button uh, underneath this video or on my channel banner. Okay, uh, there was somebody there who donated, so let me take a look. Um, hunting for sharp things. How are you liking the one with the cool pocket clip? Um, I'm going to get, oh, wait, is that, what, are, are you talking about one of the ones on the tables or are you the gentleman who brought something? Floydian214, welcome. Welcome to the Knights of the Round. Everybody raise your swords. Um, if you're talking about the Ace, the Ace has a wonderful pocket clip. Um, I love how that looks. But if you're talking about the one with a weird sort of um, almost like space alien pocket clip, yeah, that one's amazing. And I've got it over here in its, um, in its padded case kind of moved out of the way. That's something we might get out here in just a little bit. Yeah, the alien looking clip. I That knife is wonderful. And here's why I'm so excited about it it's a maker that i'm not familiar with at all so actually let me see if i can get that one out of its case here real quick there are, as you can imagine most padded cases that knives come in or that people send their knives in are black so there's a lot of black cases right off camera here here it is right here uh this guy yeah check out this pocket clip <laughs> This is cool. I mean, it's super cool. And the thumb stud is unique and the action is wonderful. Um, it kind of feels like a, a Chavez um, uh, street redemption, but then the thumb stud and the um, uh, blade profile are completely different. Uh, Clayton Allen, when can we expect an XL EDC like a Cold Steel Voyager? Um, I've done a couple, including the Luzon. I'd really like to get a uh, an XL... Um, Oh my gosh, what's the one that I make fun of all the time? Thank you so much for the donation, by the way. That was super, super nice. 92 people in here. Holy cow. Um, the uh, oh, What is the one that I'm always joking about? Um, the one that was in uh, the Expendables that he throws into the dartboard. The, um, oh my gosh, I'm such an idiot. You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, that one I definitely want to review on the channel. Number one, um, because I've heard that it's at the Espada. Thank you, Justin. The Espada, the Espada XL, it is ridiculous, but I've also heard that it's made well, and it's so popular for so many different reasons. Whether you love it or hate it, it's kind of in your face, right? So, yeah, definitely. You will definitely see XL size folding knives on this channel. Um, absolutely. Uh, let's see here. What's the fourth knife on the left, please? One, two, three, four. This one right here, or is, is that what you're talking about? That is the um, Spyderco Sleash Bowie. Um, they are long discontinued, and this, the aftermarket on them is insane. If somebody wants to throw up uh, what uh, a what those currently go for, I know that it is substantially more than the original asking price. It's one of the most ridiculously overpriced knives on the secondary market that exists right now. They are very rare and very sought after. Yeah, about $500 um for spider coat i mean this is a tai chung taiwan spider co it is built insanely well it is not built 500 dollars well yeah sauce 23 saying up to 700 um crazy do not spend that much money on it it is a wonderful knife but it's it's not that it's not worth that much uh hunting for sharp things thank you so much for the donation do you like the primordial without the flipper 
you like it better tab that this is currently equipped with. And I have figured out how to, despite me not doing it there, it's got a second sort of snap. It's sort of a, an extra suction of detent at the bottom. And I figured that out and it's, um, it's really, really cool. Mike. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't answer him. Uh, I want a tough light and a harpoon Spanto XM18. Do it. Yeah, you got it, buddy. <laughs> um, just so uh, yeah, I'll go ahead and say this so you guys know, because Mike is in here a lot. Um, Mike is my brother. So there you go. That's uh, that's who that is. Sorry, the uh, the live stream um, is uh, taking a dump, so to speak, in terms of picture quality right now. Sorry about that. Uh, but yeah, everybody say hello to, um, I guess you can call him. Uh, let's see here. Kyle says, who's all going to be a Blade show? Uh, new dates, August 7th to 9th. So here's the thing, guys. There's probably, and, and this is still up in the air, but I'm just going to warn you guys, there's probably going to be a lot of knife makers you expected to be there or manufacturers you expected to be there who aren't going to be there. Um, so I'm probably not going to go unless something major changes. I am kind of, you know, watching the situation, paying attention to it. Um, but uh, the original plan was to go, but I also didn't, you know, plan for the world to be thrust into chaos. Um, so that's just something that um, yeah, everybody's going to have to think about and consider for themselves. Excuse me. Un memento. Ah, excuse me. Okay. Cinderhead. Uh, <laughs> Cinderer head. <laughs> Hinderer said, <laughs> as of now, he isn't going to be exhibiting as well as Jim Skelton, what I've seen so far. See, and those were two of the main people that I wanted to go in and meet, you know, so that's uh, that's a little bit problematic um, for me. But, you know, if you didn't want to see them, then that may not mean anything to you, you know. Um, Let's see here. A hundred viewers and only 11 likes on the stream. Come on, guys. You're right. You know what? Now is a good time to ask everybody to give an obligatory like uh, to the live stream, uh, basically for my ego. Basically, just so I can sit here and watch those likes go up. And uh, I for what pointed out, and somebody has. So if you um, if you haven't liked the live stream, you know, you're trying patience, but we can still be friends. No, I'm kidding, Zell. Thanks for the donation. <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see here giant zoom meeting for blade show <laughs> with online ordering that would be interesting yeah sorry guys i don't know what's going on, on the internet can you hear that sounds like somebody's running around who might be running around i think my son decided to get out of bed and just stomp around upstairs so we're gonna send the send a scout <laughs> <laughs> oh man can i unlike if the stream doesn't get better Sure. I mean, if you want to, <laughs> you can unlike it. You can like it. You can not like it. You can whatever. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. Um, as you should at Jason. Baby. Okay. Sorry. I wasn't, wasn't paying attention to that conversation. M every time buffers take a shot. Oh my gosh. Well, nobody would, nobody would get through my live stream. The internet was totally fine earlier today. And then it, fell apart randomly in the middle of the afternoon and then it was totally fine and now it is uh oh here we go now the quality came back so hopefully that was just a little bit of a, a lag spike there um what's your main edc this week it's still i mean honestly it's still the pair of three this thing is uh what gets carried 99 percent of the time uh, periodically i still throw this guy in my pocket you know it kind of depends on where it is if it's laying somewhere that's convenient and I need it right then and there in the moment, then yeah, I'll pick it up. Um, any idea where I can get a Gonzo 729? No. Most, I mean, you can pick up a ton of Gonzo knives on Amazon, and I think Gonzo knives has their own website. Sometimes you can pick them up. You the Spyderco Brower? No, but I've got one right over here to my left. And uh, I, I think the Brower is a severely underrated knife. Um, I'm going to do my best to separate my opinions of the price, you know, exactly uh, whether or not it's overpriced. So something in, for, for example, something could be overpriced, but underrated, as weird as that sounds. So uh, I'll tell you right now, I think the Brower is severely underrated. Um, yeah, I forgot to stoke the coal-fired servers again. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You gotta shovel some more coal into the old locomotive motor or whatever. 
Um, let's see here. Kyle Roberts, do you prefer the pair of three because it's a pair of three or because it's Maximet? Like, if you had a pair of three in a different steel, would you carry it as much? Yeah, I definitely would. The Maximet is a huge uh, bonus. I mean, it, it's a huge bonus. But truthfully, I mean, like, the Maximet's overkill for day-to-day -day for me. Um, that thing could be... I mean, for what I use it for, it could be VG10. <laughs> it could be OS8. It would be just fine. You know, um, it's really more about the profile, the feeling, the, the ease of manipulation. And now that I've got the right pocket clip on it, um, the carry, you know, carry position. Spirited Whiskey, what's going on, man? Thanks for coming in. DJ, I'm Knives and Gear. I started YouTube because of you. Thanks for all you do. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, if you are uh, if you are not subscribed to D2M Knives and Gear, um, you're of course welcome to leave the live stream and uh, go subscribe and come right back. I promise I'll still be here. Check them out, support new knife channels, absolutely. Um, let's see. Have you seen anything on the Spiderco bomb circle yet? Is that how you say that bomb circle? <laughs> no, no, but I'll certainly be checking it out after the live stream. That's for sure. Um, Kyle Sams, I don't understand what's going on here. I don't think any of us really understand what's going on here. Bombshell, oh, <laughs> bombshell <laughs> makes more sense, but now I kind of want there to be a Spyderco bomb circle. Um, <laughs> that sounds like fun. I'd be like, bomb circle, what's that mean? Uh, it sounds interesting, maybe I'll pick it up. Uh, next Spyderco reveal is going to be early May. Interesting, okay. Um, I surely they won't be doing another. What was that flash? Did you see that? Oh, can you focus? Oh, is, it, is it storming? It's probably squirrel. That's probably squirrel. Squirrels do that. They flash. <laughs> <laughs> they they spontaneously combust in Kansas. <laughs> um, but uh, anyways, I've no, yeah, that was thunder. Okay. Wow. Okay. It's storming. No, I know it won't kill me. I live in Kansas, but I'm just saying I wasn't expecting it tonight. Um, it's storming in haze. Oh, it is. You know, weird. Well, I, I haven't been outside. You know, I do, I, like, every time I open my front door, I, like, hiss at the sunlight because I've been quarantined so long, and then I sprint out to my mailbox to see if somebody sent me a knife, and then I run back in as soon as the, wa the neighbor waves. Huh? Oh, I'm sorry. My wife goes to the mailbox for me. Oh, my wife goes to the post office for me. Um, thoughts on the Wee Knives Chimeras and EDC? See, that's a big EDC, but man, it's a sweet one. Um, super big, super aggressive. If you wear jeans every day, yeah. I mean, I'm sure you've watched one of my reviews. If you wear jeans every day, no problem. Um, if you're wearing jogging tights, I would say probably not. But yeah, the Chimera is an amazing EDC. I've got a full review on it. It's an older one, but yeah, check it out for sure. Um, sparkle in the sun, MC. <laughs> um, why not? Uh, oh, he said he's talking to Slicey. Um, Danny T, why are we not seeing the Benchmade Griptilian, or in this case, the Ruder Hogue? Everybody wants to see the classics. Nobody cares about anything else on the table except for the ones that they see uh, every single day. So always directly to the right are the PM2, the Rat 1, the Ruder Hogue, and the Para 3, because they're the size comparison knives. And uh, they um, they're always right there, ready to ready to go on camera. Are you going to review the Curtis? Yes, I promise that the Curtis will get reviewed. If you if you ever see a knife on a table on this channel, whether it's in an unboxing, uh, it's used as an example, like a size comparison, um, or it's during a live stream. If you see a knife, it's going to get reviewed, unless it is um, something abysmal or something that was sent to me as a joke. Um, Let's see, absolutely love that rock set. Me too. Boy, oh boy, do I love this rock set. There you go. Let's give you guys a good look of my entire studio down in the dungeon down here because this is a fully uh, mirror polished bevel. <laughs> that is a, a very expensive knife. Absolutely. Uh, well, some people don't see value in certain knives, and that's okay. It just depends on what you want and what you're buying. Um, Justin the Hunter, anybody know where to get aluminum anno done? Uh, I, good question. I don't know. It's the hard code anodizing, the type 3 hard code anodizing that you're looking for. I don't know. I don't know what the difference between that, I mean, how you achieve that versus, you know, the, the heat, uh, 
uh, anodizing that you put on um, titanium. MC, your lighting is throwing a ton of glare off the knives tonight. Yeah, you're right. Should we turn some of these upside down? It's uh, starting with this guy. Boy. Uh, maybe some of these other ones. Let's just turn them all upside down. How about that? Spirited Whiskey always has my back in terms of lighting. I actually um, changed the lighting or changed the way. Actually, it was the application I was using to record and the amount of exposure that I was um, allowing to come through. Um, immediately after after having a conversation with Spirited about how uh, everything was being displayed on the channel. So live streams, I can't control the exposure. Um, so we just get a lot, you, you're getting what the light actually looks like, whereas in the reviews, you're actually getting about, I don't know, it's only like 65% exposure, which is why the, the um, reviews look so much different than these. And the exposure doesn't change too much how the knives appear naturally, um, but they do allow a little bit more detail. I imagine that's a little better. What? Who's making fun of me? Yeah. Where, where'd you see the comment? Pull all your knives in a circle on the floor and lay down in the middle of them, Jared Leto Joker style. <laughs> I actually made a meme about that. When I said when people asked me why I need so many folding knives, and it was just uh, that that image. Um, Freedom Van, MC, I've been lusting after the Shelby GT350 all week. I think I'm going to sell my 03 G3, G35 coupe to buy it. So, now wait. Uh, you're talking about the, the Mustang, the GT350. Are you talking about a new one? Because those things are insane. We actually were really connected to us was a Ford dealership, and we got to see one of the first new ones that came in. Um, your 03 G35 Infinity? An Infinity G35, I'm guessing, is what you're saying. Um, congratulations if you get your hands on a 350. That's really cool. How does the 0777 compare to the 770? I don't know. I've never I've never handled the 770, but this is a different breed of zero tolerance. This is a ZT where a little bit more special love and care went into it. I mean, this has a much higher end, much more frictionless fall shut action than I normally uh, experience with a zero tolerance knife. Um, on top of that, it is a composite blade, blah, blah, blah. Carbon fiber with the um, sort of uh, sub frame lock, I guess, whatever you want to call that. This is a uh, much higher tier of, of zero tolerance knife. I'm not sure. What are you, what are you looking for? Nothing. Um, can't help the shiny sigil. Yeah, the sigil. Here, maybe we can. I wonder if we can switch it and see if maybe the glare is different over here. No, <laughs> not really. That's okay. It's just going to be very golden. Um, only a little bit of controversy surrounding that ZT. Yeah, just a little bit. Nothing to worry about. <laughs> Matrix, Matrix. <clears throat> Sorry. I cough funny. <laughs> Microtech and zero tolerance. Anyways. <laughs> yeah, it's the ZT is big. Um, let's see here. The hinder is ginormous. Yeah, so the hinder is an XM24. Um, this is a very large knife, and it is, bar none, the heaviest detent that exists on the planet. This is not comfortable. I am a huge hinder fan. This is one of the most painful knives to flip <laughs> that exists. It is not comfortable. But if you love hinder knives, you'll probably love the XM24. It's also thick. Look how thick that is. This is crazy. It's super thick. Love it, though. I love my overbuilt knives. Um, no, I'm not going to keep it tipped down. I just haven't changed the pocket clip yet. When come new, for whatever reason, the pocket clip is tipped down, which is a, basically a mortal sin. Um, would you consider the Alpha Dog over the SE4? Yeah, I probably would, because the Alpha Dog, it has a little bit... I mean, the SE4 is amazing. It's an amazing, amazing knife. Um, I, I like how robust the Alpha Dog feels, but more so the handle. The handle of the Alpha Dog is the most comfortable... I mean, it's the most ergonomic handle design I've ever felt. I mean, it's literally just like molded, like in a, the most precision way for the human hand. It's insane. Um, 
my quayback is terrible to flip. I've always assumed that, but I always love how the I've always loved how the quayback looks. I know it's kind of a gym festival too, like hinder, um, but I still want to handle one. I've never handled the quayback. Maybe that's something that I should ask uh, uh, that I should ask for on the next list that I send out. I, it's gonna be, people have been asking me like, how do I send you a knife for review? Um, I appreciate people offering. I have so many knives to review so many knives to get back to people that are on a schedule it's going to be a little bit so you know rest assured when i say i would love to review um you know a ton of the stuff that people have offered up but i just i have to wait i, I can't get too too backed up on stuff you know i, I want to keep uh keep control and um, be able to keep these things organized um and get everything back within the four to five week time period that i promised people so that's why um let's see here Seems like the Essies have moved on to better steels. Like what? I'm interested because they've been like it's been pretty much exclusively 1095 forever. Uh, Kent Carey, can you do some vintage popular brands like vintage Benchmades, uh, etc.? Yeah, I'd love to. If somebody's got some ultra rare Benchmades, I'd love to take a look at them. Here's the problem with those: as interesting as they are, um, if there's not a lot of people like the modern knife world has. A lot, of, a lot of us who have been here for a long time, some people who are in today's knife world because they were around as the old knife world started to expand, right? And then there's people who are brand new. So I have to consider my own viewing audience, which the vast majority of you by analytics are between 25 and 45 years old. So in some cases, some knives don't, are, they're, I mean, it's, as cool as it would be to review them, you know, they, may, nobody made there, there's there's a, a potential for people to just not really understand exactly what it is they're looking at. And then on top of that, a lot of times people see stuff like that and they're like, so it was it was a knife from a long time ago and it's not available anymore and then they get frustrated with me. I still, for the most part, review what I want, right? But at the same time, I want to show you guys stuff that, that is, number one, something that I'm interested in, and number two, something that you guys are interested in, Right. Because that's what's fun. That's what creates all the engagement. Um, considering how many hinders you've handled, would you ever consider picking up another 0562? Definitely. Definitely. I, I still I consider that every single day. Should I just buy an 0562 and keep it and not get rid of it? Because I've owned the thing three times and I keep getting rid of it um, for whatever reason. Let's see here. Have you ever reviewed the Fox Radius? Uh, I just got one. I love it. No, but I brought up I brought that up on a, another video, um, and uh, certainly something that I'd like to take a look at. Um, so I says, yeah, every time I review something out of production, nobody watches it. It can be hard, you know. Like I've poured my heart and soul into reviews where I'm just so interested in the knife, and nobody, either people don't care or they don't know what it is. And you know, it's hard because I mean, as somebody who puts out YouTube videos. I mean, yeah, for the most part, I mean, the primary reason that, that we do this is because we love knives, right? But it can, it can be a little disheartening when people just don't watch the video. And that's part of, I mean, that's the thing. You have to adapt to your audience. That's, it's a, it's a balancing act, you know? So um, sometimes I just say, you know, F it. I'm going to review this anyway because I just really like it. And if the video gets, uh, you know, a thousand views and no more, then okay. Then that's fine. You know, sometimes that happens. Um, Let's see here. Metal Complex, has Mrs. Complex moved on from the blur? Or is it a staple that is here to stay for her? Well, what is that, honey? What's your answer there? Have you moved on from the blur? She'd, she, her, she, she has a softer voice than me. So you guys probably can't hear. She said no. Uh, she compares everything to the blur. The blur is um, her ultimate folding knife. And she, I don't, has anything even come close to it? No, okay. It's weird that that's the one I gave you, and you like it that much. <laughs> it's actually right here. I've got it in the box, or in the uh, in the display case. Oh wait, no. Did did you take it back upstairs? Do you have it? Uh, no, it's right here. Yeah. You had it out on the table the other day. Here you go. I'll let you play with it off camera. So much. <laughs> <laughs> also, something that sounds really bad on a live stream where the camera's not focused on us. It's it's extremely hard, especially when you put lots of time testing and thought into it. Kind of makes you steer clear of those types of knives. Yeah, 100%, Sasha, 100%. You know, but that's the thing. It's like, 
there are certain things that we just want to talk about. There's certain things that we want to do a video on as a reviewer, as a tester, anybody who's just doing YouTube. And it might just be, it might be something that we as the, the, I guess the content creators are interested in, but our audience isn't. And sometimes it's worth it and sometimes it isn't. You know, every now and then I do a video about something that I just really, really love. And I know 100% that nobody's gonna watch it, I do it anyway. But for the most part, I try to be really careful about the stuff that I show because I know 100%. If I do a video that says spider co anything, it'll get two and a half times the views that it normally does, right? Spider co, you know, uh, Tupperware set, you know, people will watch it. Um, but if I do a video on, for example, um, the Curtis knives, uh, they're amazing, but people just won't watch it as much. That's just, that's just how it is. MC, let's see that NG Hawk up close for sure. man. beautiful, beautiful knife. Spirited's got a couple uh, Hawks that I've been begging uh, for him to send to me. And uh, we'll see if that happens. Check out back here, that backspacer. Oof. Makes the best noise. Also, check out the uh, the uh, logo and the carbon fiber. This makes the best noise on lockout. Oh, it's so clicky and it's so solid. I have heard the legends of Hawk's uh, legendary lockout solidity. And the legends are true. The legends are very true. There's a Spyderco Tupperware set. Where can I get <laughs> If there was, you guys know it would be on my Amazon store. <laughs> I'd mention it at the beginning of every video. Um, let's see here. Andrew, uh, Spirit of Whiskey, yeah, production specifically Rock City doesn't appeal to me, but the Grimsmo Rask does. I would like to check out the Grimsmo Rask at some point, too. I very much would. Um, have you considered bringing on more Chinese budget knives? uh like tucson yes absolutely but a design has to appeal to me here's the thing this is my honest opinion on tucson they're they uh they, they have got some interesting designs their prices are unbelievable unbelievable stuff that is really really appealing to me um like i mean you guys know that i look for certain things certain design elements and knives a lot of it is a little quirky or not present at all in Tucson knives, like they've got the materials down, right? And the general overall profile is good. But for whatever reason, there's weird um, design executions that I'm just not, I'm just like, eh, I don't know, you know? Um, but like the 223, oh my gosh, the Jelly Jerry design, crazy. Let's see some more of that. I'll pick some more Tucson's up, right? For sure. Um, I don't know, to get a Koenig Arias? <laughs> I mean, you can do that all you want. I'm not sure that it's gonna yield, um, it's gonna yield what you want. Um, let's see, Michael Taylor, Spidey Chef with a Vanax 4.5 inch blade would be my back pocket knife for life. <laughs> wow, wow, yeah. Uh, is that Swedish Bowie? Yes, it is, Danny T, yes it is, I had a very, uh, generous viewer offered to send his um, Sleesh Bowie. I'm pretty sure this was Eric Be Like um, on Instagram. And uh, he was like, hey, you want to take a look at this? And I was like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, I do. Thank and he was like, sure. And just sent it, you know. Um, considering how rare and valuable these are. And his is perfect, by the way. Um, absolutely mint. Eric, there he is right there. Um, it's at Eric Be Like. Um, could we see the Mordax? Yeah, for sure. He's like, yeah, yeah, my sleesh, I don't care. This is the gentleman who sent the, uh, this, the Bowie. Um, but yes, Eric, absolutely. Hang on here, let me, let me find the zipper pouch that it's in. Because they're all black. Uh, oh, where is that? Un momento, it's here. Just gotta make sure do that. <laughs> oh boy. Everybody wait. Everybody wait for Metal Complex. Here it is. Um, so Eric's Mordax has the, um, the quick thumb stud installed on it. 
And I gotta say, yeah, this makes a lot of sense. And it's not in the cutting path because there's a choil there and it's no thicker than the scales. I mean, as large as it is, you can see it right there. It's no thicker than the scales. So, I mean, it is kind of a large barrel on top of your blade, but I mean, yeah. And you know what? And now I can do the reverse flick with it and I can do the thumb flick with it. I like this. I kind of want to experiment with that and see what else. I kind of want to pick one up and then see um, what all blades I can attach to. But yeah, the Mordax uh, that you've got here is pretty sick. And it also adds a little bracing point. I mean, there's no jimping back here, but you really can sort of, you know, lock in there, choke up on it, I guess. My apology for the Wahlberg joke on Knife Junkie. Dude, don't apologize at all. Every time we go, like, what is this? It's like one in five times that we go to get fast food. He made a joke about Wahlburgers? Yeah, no, he said, he was like, and your other show, Wahlburgers, because of... I he was talking shit about Oh, she, I mean, my, my wife was not upset about you, um, you know, comparing it. She thought that you were actually insulting the actual Wahlburgers, uh, in which case she was very upset. <laughs> No, don't worry about that. It's all the time, man. Um, Wahlberg, uh, um, John Cena, and Chris Pratt are the three that I usually get. So no worries, buddy. Uh, Danny T. Metal Complex, when is the Spyderco Bowie coming? Probably a Friday, right? Yeah, if you figured that out on Fridays, I, um, I do uh, knives that I'm pretty sure will get a lot of attention, or at least ones that I hold really high. So if you guys don't know... Friday's knife reviews are almost always ones that I'm going to lose my mind over. I mean, like, if you really want to hear, you know, I'm, I'm positive. Everybody knows I'm super positive. But Friday knife reviews are always the ones that I blow up. I'm really pumped about. Um, yeah, if you're talking about the Sleesh Bowie, yeah, it's, I would say uh, two weeks from now is roughly what you're looking at. That's about how long, usually, I'll have a knife before I review it. And I'll give it a solid three days of, you know, if if the, the person who sent it to me says carry it, I will carry it. Uh, if they don't say that, then I net, I mean, I don't, don't put it in my pocket, don't use it or anything like that. Um, but uh, a lot of times it just gets examined very thoroughly. I'll sit on the couch with it as my wife can attest and probably all of your significant others can attest. You sit there and flip it, you feel it out, you gather your thoughts. It's amazing how much information you can absorb from a folding knife. Um, by sitting there just opening and closing it yeah, i mean it, it truly is amazing and this is of course uh, under the assumption that you have gone out and used a lot of different types of folding knives in the same not necessarily caliber but the same design type right they have the same similar lock type similar blade geometry you go out and use them kind of understand how they're going to react to certain materials right um, and then you use that information that's sitting in your subconscious and you apply it to what you're gathering subconsciously sitting there opening and closing it I'm sure Slicey does the exact same thing, 100%. Um, and probably Stoss as well. There are certain people, I mean, like de some people definitely go out of their way and use their knives a lot more than I do, uh, in which case they're going to gain more information, obviously. Let's see here. Now I have to check to see if my sham Shamoir was posted on Friday to see how I really feel about it. Now, it might have been, uh, Kyle, but the truth is, is just because a knife isn't uploaded on Friday, doesn't necessarily mean that I wasn't crazy about it. Oftentimes I will upload two videos back to back, like Thursday and Friday, or sometimes another video in the middle of the week. If for whatever reason I see like a drop in views, uh, I've got this big sort of um, reserve tank, so to speak, of uh, videos. And I will shuffle them around depending on how my views are doing that day to keep everything evened out. The reason for that is, is I like to get, I like to see the, I don't like to see big up and down jumps in the lines. I like to see things pretty even. Um, so that's generally how that works. Hey, Eric has joined the Knights of the Round. Everybody give him a hearty welcome. Raise your swords, show him some love. Eric, enjoy uh, the uh, the emojis. You've got access to those now. So choose your, choose your sword, buddy. Thanks for joining, I appreciate that. Zell, I would say MC looks a lot like John Cena because I wait because <laughs> because I can't see him with quarantine going up. Yeah, yeah, Zell can't uh, he can't see me. Whenever I like if I have to give something to Zell or another local buddy, um, I have to put it in my mailbox and have them come get it. And it's not here's the thing, it's because I have kids 
And I do, I mean, like, we're, however the rest of the world views it, I don't care. You know, when it comes to your kids, you keep them safe. You know, you do what you got to do. So that's, so that's why. So we're just kind of shut in here. Um, uh, let's see. If I, oh, yeah, sorry. So the out of context co uh, comments are coming through because of all the swords. <laughs> Ah, boy. Whoop, whoop, there we go. Yes, Eric, for sure. And thanks for joining, buddy. I appreciate that. Um, Shaker says, I'd love to get a culture attack. This is a very, very new brand to me. Um, I just started hearing about them, I want to say, maybe three weeks ago, maybe. Um, so I'm interested to learn more, but as you can imagine, my head is full of nothing but knife information, and there wasn't a lot of room in there to start with, so you got to have to find a way to pack some more in there. Gregory Berg, thanks, buddy. I appreciate that. Um, Justin the Hunter with the, with the awesome questions. Favorite type of burger? So the, in, here in town, we have a place called the Q, or the Golden Q, and it's like the go-to sports bar, hangout place whether it's during the day and you're with you know family and kids you know or it's later on like on a saturday evening and you're you're going to have a few drinks but they have the is it the bob burger what's the one that's the big uh spicy crazy or is it the hangover burger the hang, there's a i think there's a hangover burger there called it, it well it's an egg and hash brown burger called the hangover burger burger and it's just a big heaping slop mess, and I, I love it. <laughs> I, I would say that that's definitely my favorite. MC live streams a giant one hour long sword fight. Yeah, everybody just like spamming swords, like button mashing. Is Ricky in here? Oh, yeah, like he's Ricky. He's Ricky. Yeah, he's Ricky. Like you do, you don't eat hangover burgers. What you're I'm saying? Like oh, white eggs and cauliflower. No. I've seen him eat a burger. It's a cu <laughs> It's two cucumbers with a cucumber in the middle. <laughs> That's so mean. He's like, hi, everybody. And I'm like, Ricky likes cucumbers. <laughs> Sorry, man. So bitter. <laughs> oh, man. Ricky, you guys remember Ricky from the very early days, the channel where I was reviewing knives out of the vehicles that we sold on the dealership lot that we worked at. Worked at. Danny T, how many Wee Knife Co. knives on your channel? Yeah, um, I there are a lot that I'd like to check out. I'll admit, as many knives as we, you know, puts out there, um, they got a lot of stuff that I'm just like visually I'm not into that. But every now and then they have a they have an absolute home run. And uh, when I here's the thing, it it all has to sync up. It has to be fresh in my mind, and I have to be actively ready to send a new list of knives I want to review to my reviewers because if it's there if, if I'm like actively seeking it um, then I'm gonna ask for it and chances are somebody's gonna have it and hopefully will send it to me um, let's see I wish the Bowie would re be re-released I am so freaking regret procrastinating on that one so uh, I had an idea for a video another top 10 video uh, I do a lot of those in this channel um, I'm thinking of building a top 10 list of knives that have been discontinued that should be brought back. And um, I'll tell you right now, after handling this guy, yeah, I agree. But I also, I mean, the idea that they wouldn't bring it back seems a little bit more obscure than anything else. But yeah, I mean, like, if that sounds like something that you guys would be interested in watching, oh yeah, I've got at least 10 uh, that I am like, why was that discontinued? Why? Oh, this is doing great! You know, and then they just yeet it, like, into the sky. See you later! Thanks for your help! Why? Why? Why do they just get... I mean, like, I know that a lot more goes into it. You know, collaborations end, contracts end, right? But, um, you know, it's like, it's frustrating. St don't stop making it. People like it. I think I'm... She was looking at me like, oh my gosh, you psychopath. <laughs> Calm down. Uh, Danny says... Which fifth blade would you actually leave the house with if not camping or building a fire? There's only one. There's only one fixed blade that I have ever thought, you know what, I would EDC that. And uh, it's this Jim Skelton custom little finger. 
this is an amazing EDC fixed blade. I mean, it's this small, uh, it's only a three finger knife, but yeah, I mean, this works. And on top of that, he has these leather pouches built with pocket clips. It's a full custom knife, but I mean, yeah, this makes sense. Um, I, Jim Skelton knew exactly what he was doing when he made this. It carries beautifully. I would absolutely you to see that. Did you want to see it? Be careful. Be super careful. Oh well, it's God. really, the tip is super pointy is what I mean. Oh my gosh, the accidental phrasing tonight. I am so sorry. So what I, you come in, in here, don't do that. <laughs> uh, let's see. Serbian uh, Savage at Metal Complex, what's your opinion on the CRKT Pilar? Would love to know my man. I did review the CRKT Pilar. Um, I think it's a great knife. Um, back then I was saying, you know, eh, it's the fit and finish is okay, but I can wave it off because uh, of the um, of the price range. I think the one that they did, I, what's confusing to me is that they made a large one and like it's like a trivial difference in size. But the one I would go for, if I was going to pick it up right now, the G10 and steel version that's the larger size with the D2 blade would be the one that I would go for. And I think the fit and finish is good enough, and mainly it's the ergonomic design, right? It's the overall carry profile and the ergonomic design that I am attracted to. And uh, yeah, I think it's a great knife. That was one of my first giveaways. Huh? No, I've got, I've got plenty. Do you need more? No. Oh, okay. Um, let's see here. CRK Niala for me on a fix. Yeah. So my actual favorite fixed blade of all time, not considering necessarily how easy it is to EDC, Shaker will tell you is the CRK Niala. Oh my goodness. Um, if you've never gone and looked at that knife, go look at it. They have it in two variants as far as I know. They have it in, uh, it's like a gray, grayish micarta and a brown micarta. And then they have a drop point or spear point blade that's very similar to the Sabenza. And then they have it in a sheep's foot blade. My goodness, is that a wonderful folding knife. And for a super premium US folding knife made of S35VN with, S35 uh, with all of the uh, you know fit and finish embellishments you'd expect from a CRK, they come in at 250 bucks, which I honestly think is extremely fair. Um, I love that knife. Oh, it's out of production now? That sucks. Okay, well, I'm adding that one to the list. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just me. That's like a personal thing. See, here's the thing. When I make a list, part of it, I mean, 99% of it is, um, it has to be, I mean, my opinion that it should come back into place. But it also has to be a knife where there's a, like, my opinion sinks enough for the people that it's worth putting on the list, right? So if I throw in there, you know, if I'm like, um, the ZT0909 was the greatest folding knife ever, and it should absolutely be put back into production. I, the truth is, is, I love the 0909, but I know the majority of other people don't necessarily think that it's that great. So it may not be necessarily one that makes the list, right? I mean, like, I, I do take other people's opinion into consideration, but it does have to sync up with my actual opinion. You know, I want to make sure that you know, the, this information that the people are getting or my opinion, or my opinion's getting in there because it has to be real, right? But if I'm just yelling like random, like just personal desires where I'm like, nobody else wants this, but I think it's a good idea. So it's going on the list, right? I mean, I, I want to put things on a top 10 list that I think are great and would actually benefit the vast majority or not necessarily vast majority, but a, a large portion of the knife community that would also enjoy seeing it come back and would benefit from it. Does that make sense? Sounds like I'm pandering, I guess, kind of. Um, what inspired you to start thumbnailing semi-face shots for your vids? So, that's it's weird. I don't know. I was like, I wonder what would happen if I put part of my face in a um, thumbnail to sort of emphasize. Because the knife, I can't remember which one I did first. But it was something I was really excited about. And I was like, maybe I should capture, you know, I, I guess in part my excitement for the thing that I'm about to unbox. And it would be kind of funny to put a partial facial expression in a thumbnail and see how that affects things. And for whatever reason, it got a lot more views. And I thought, well, was it the knife or the fact that I put my face in there? 
So I kept doing it and it turns out, yeah, on average, the thumbnails that I put my part of my face in get like 30% more views. So I thought, okay, that's fine. I'll just start doing that. Um, I'm from Sharp Things. Thanks so much for the donation again, buddy. That's really nice. Um, CRK going to do a special run. The last Niala's, they have materials for it. That's really cool. Maybe I should consider jumping on that. That's, I'm very, very happy to know that. Thank you very much. Very cool. Um, I built a sort of name. Oh, okay, you guys turned on something else. Um, let's see here. A sneak peek in the future. What's this? that disappointed you the most regardless of other people's opinions on them. That is a wonderful idea. Um, yes, I will absolutely top 10 most disappointing knives. I do not normally do negative videos, but I know you guys like them. Um, but that is, yeah, I, I, I mean, that's a, that's a wonderful topic idea and I will absolutely do that. That's a great suggestion. In fact, I have a negative video coming tomorrow morning that you guys will be treated with. The top ten most, the top ten ugliest folding knives, in my opinion, uh, will be tomorrow morning at eight or nine o'clock, and I'm sure you guys will get a kick out of that. Lots of pictures and lots of sarcasm for sure. Um, but yes, yes, can you remember that? Because I won't. Okay, most disappointing knives. I will absolutely. You'll see that within the next week or two. I promise. Zell, thank you so much, buddy. So nice just constantly doing that That's so nice obviously we're knife people in here but i'm curious to see how many people like slash own guns in here raise your swords if you own it yeah you're gonna get i mean i would say at least i mean it's got to be 50 percent at least uh it's just one of those things where it's just a uh it's a direct correlation you know um but yeah zell is all is a, a big uh a firearms guy so there you go if you are not uh following him on Instagram or uh, I guess ZB Customs and then at, uh, is it at Zell Beaverly or at Beaverly Zell? But yeah, he should be. He's, he's an awesome guy. He's got some cool stuff. Yeah, I'm kind of with you there, Jonathan Shaw. I, I also like firearms. I just don't own any and I don't know enough about them. I mean, my experience with firearms is basically just typical growing up in Kansas, right? You you walk 30 feet in any direction and oh, there you, somebody's got a firearm, you know, we don't shoot clay pigeons or whatever, you know, that's, that's basically how I grew up. Um, how's the giant mouth Sonoma? It's wonderful. The Ace Sonoma. Wonderful, wonderful knife. Um, I really like the, the crown, uh, the crown spine. And I also like the placement of the jimping. Notice how it's not back here. This is actually where my thumb wants to go. And that's where they put the jimping. Smart. I like that. Um, really, really wonderful design. I'm also liking the color choices on this one. Black and bronze. Very, very beautiful. I have something coming in the new fu near future that will be mine that is uh, largely black and bronze. That is all the information I'm going to give you. Um, blah, blah, blah. What kind of face will you make for the Spyderco Bowie? <laughs> it's already made. You'll see it on, I think, Monday. Monday is the unboxing for that one. It's very dramatic, I, eyes wide. What? Yeah, my wife said my eyes are never wide. I have very Mark Wahlberg eyes where they're kind of squinty and shut, half shut most of the time. Um, good guess, Kyle, it's not a full track. That would be sweet though. I'll tell you what, if the all, so I've, I've been very tempted to buy that two-tone satin and gold uh, full track, the last one that's available, the special gold edition that's on Smoky Mountain Knife Works. I've been very tempted by that. By the way, somebody who's really wanting a special edition full track before they go completely discontinued, there's a two tone gold and satin one on Smoky Mountain Knife, Knife Works that will almost certainly be worth more money at some point. If that's the kind of thing you're looking for and you've got 600 and whatever, 630 to spend, you should probably pick that up. I'm just going to let you know. A lot of you guys, a lot of you Hinder fans probably know that it's there. But I'm just letting you know. For a while, there were some all gold ones, not two tone, and I uh, I'm kind of kicking myself for not picking one of those up. There was a blue and black one with gold. Definitely would have picked that up. The all black one with gold would have been the one that I I would have gone for. So thoughts on the Boker Mermaid? Um, uh, she, she is quite majestic. Uh, 
It's an absolute mystery what uh, the steel is, but it's surely something extravagant and probably beyond comprehension. Um, and uh, my uh, my my servitude to her lady is is something that I, it's something I'll never experience again. Uh, I greatly miss that relationship. <laughs> That's the uh, you remember the unboxing guy? Oh, oh, my wife's leaving now. Sorry, yeah, sorry, honey. Sorry about the mermaid. <laughs> Um, what is the current Excalibur right now? So the the currents, a lot of knives have been labeled as, a lot of people think that whatever hinderer I currently have is my Excalibur, and that's not true. I, I own different hinderers because I just like to own different hinderers. You know, if I pick one up, it's because I'm interested in it. When I'm done playing with it, I sell it, and then I buy another one. The closest thing to Excalibur that I have ever experienced um, is, uh, it's, it's actually between two knives. And it's hard to say exactly why. The first one is the Gen 6 XM18 three and a half inch slicer in 20 CV with the textured titanium scale. Wonderful, wonderful knife. Has everything that I could possibly want. Great flip, flipping action. Um, the, uh, excuse me, external stops um, or the, the stops that are on either side. It doesn't necessarily have to be external. They just need to be on either side of the blade bracing on the frame rather than the blade bracing on a stop pin that's attached to the frame because there's more surface contact and I like it that way. That's why I talk about pressure mitigation. It, it absolutely makes a difference in terms of where the force goes. If you're doing a pry cut, it doesn't go into the pivot, it goes into the frame. Um, but anyways, texture titanium, it's got the clickiness, it's got the heft, right? It's got the, the feeling that, I, that I'm looking for. The other knife that I can't deny is an absolute candidate for Excalibur is the Holt Spectre V4. Um, there's really nothing to complain about on this knife. My, I have a personal bias um, for knives that have a little bit of a thicker blade stock and have a little bit of excess heft. The only thing that this knife does not have that I have a weird bias towards that has nothing to do with utility, in fact, actually, um, if this thing were thicker and heavier, it would probably take away from utilitarian benefit. Um, the, the only thing this knife doesn't have is the thick blade stock and the excess heft. Um, but I think it's for the better because this is one of the greatest um, cutting tools that has ever existed. Absolutely. And the fact that it is no longer a frame lock in the V4, it's a liner lock, means that you can put your hands literally anywhere on this side. It doesn't matter how much pressure you put, and it's going to flip every single time. These are beyond excellent they are very pricey but uh yeah if you can get your hands on one they're excellent andrew tool just actually uh won the lottery for one here recently very lucky won a lottery to buy one um lucky guy absolutely let's see hey mc give us a look at the sigil yeah for sure sorry i get lost in words here um it's a gold um uh treated blade a rose gold treated blade and then it's got the uh, brass scale, and on the other side, it's got titanium, and it looks, looks like more brass there on what I initially thought was the over-travel stop. I mean, it's it's just a plate, I guess. I'm not I'm not 100% sure about this area right here, but we'll, we'll look into it before I review it. And then it looks like that's probably a brass uh, backspacer as well. Uh, blade steel on Sky is M390. I would really like to see more bronze blades. Um, on folding knives in the future. If Hinderer did this on more of his knives, he's done it a few times in the form of a gold, like just a heat uh, finish and in the form of a, a, an, F, uh, an FDE uh, DLC. I, I would love that. I love bronze. I'm a huge fan of bronze, 100%. Sorry, excuse me. They're making sure that it, we get it laid back down without causing any damage to it. Ah, well then, there you go. Um, I don't know, my next Protec will be the Rose Gold Blade. Yeah, yeah, the Rose Gold uh, Protec, uh, is it the Camigo? Uh, what is that one? What's the little short, chunky one? Is it, is that what it is? They do a lot of Rose Gold Blades. They did it, there was a TR3 Auto a while back that I almost bought with the Rose Gold that looked beautiful. Can you, can we see the Rockstead for sure? Yep. Rockstead Higo 2, sorry, I'm going to get some um, some dust flakes off this that have fallen from the ceiling real quick here because it is a fully 
mirror polish. You're not fully mirror polished, but the bev the bevel down to the um, the cutting edge is mirror polished. Um, but this is uh, ZDP 189, and then we've got this smoky, almost charcoal uh, finish on the flats here, and then we have this excellence. Um, it's almost like it's got flakes in it, like car paint. You guys probably can't see it, but the carbon fiber actually has what looks like a metallic flake in it. And then we've got titanium uh, liners. We've got a lock bar insert. Action that is very similar to a Sabenza, very hydraulic. Um, this is a very precision made item. It is ridiculously expensive, but I can understand it, handling it. It does feel substantially different than knives that are substantially less expensive, for sure. Uh, John, want to see the ProTech? Um, this ProTech? The one with the, uh, the, the aftermarket thumb stud? The um, Mordax? Wonderful knife. Uh, wish that um, they would make it permanently. I also wish that it was permanently in titanium, but you guys know that um, the titanium ones are rare. Actually, have one. From the same gentleman who sent the, uh, the uh, uh, oh gosh, <laughs> the what am I trying to say here? The the Spectre V4. Um, here's the titanium version, the special edition uh, Mordax titanium. I'll actually, hold them up side by side here. I don't know that this this comparison's ever been made on YouTube. These are both, you know, made by Protec. Final finish work on this guy's done by Ferrum Forge. Um, substantially more expensive, $450 to $150, depending on the options you chose there. But this one's titanium with a sort of hammer finish titanium backspacer. Um, then here's the other side. we got some titanium hardware there. Yeah, they're largely the same knife, though. No, I, I don't think there are. I think these are quite a bit gone. These are also quite a bit more hefty because they're titanium and they're not milled out. It feels very similar. It's just got a different reverberation because it's one titanium and one's aluminum. Um, but yeah, they're they're basically the same thing. What? Oh yeah, we're gonna go till uh, about ten fifteen tonight, guys. So usually I'm gonna start. A, I'm gonna try and remember a tradition here that we're gonna keep going around ten o'clock. Um, that's the time where I like to ask people. You know, if you have any random questions for me, questions that don't necessarily have to have to do with knives at all. Um, I like answering the weird stuff. I like making the vast majority of my live streams about knives, for sure. But uh, I also like an answering random questions. I'm a pretty open book, and I don't shy away from questions. As long as it's appropriate for YouTube and the live stream, I'll probably answer it. So ask away, for sure. Um, yeah, it's a, it belongs to a gentleman um, who is on Instagram at herms h-e-r-m-s dot things so i guess if you want to try to pry the uh titanium mordax out of his hand you're you're welcome to give it a shot it is in perfect condition as far as i can tell what's my favorite word hmm um i don't I, the funniest word one of the funniest words to me is pumpernickel I like to yell that word after I've inhaled a bunch of helium from a balloon. <laughs> it's just funny. How small have you been hearing? I feel like you intentionally skipped over that one. Oh, I did? One I didn't see it. Um, let's see here. Oh. Uh-oh. Four years. Three years? Oh, three years. Sorry. Three and a half. Okay, so four. <laughs> three and a half. I put that picture of my wife and I up. Uh, on our wedding day on Instagram too many comments and I was like ah eh, just whatever <laughs> uh, Walt oh no is Steve here whenever I see that word I almost I can almost feel his presence I'm surprised he's not here here today you, know, you didn't Such like a that weird thing to say. well sorry DC or Marvel oh Marvel for sure I mean I like I like some DC I love Superman love Batman, but Marvel is way more interesting. Uh, what's my favorite brand of bar soap? Probably Irish Spring. <laughs> it, it, just, it just dries you out to the point where you don't have to worry about whether or not anything's clean. Uh, LIV, welcome to the Knights of the Round. Thank you so much. Raise your swords for LIV. 
Appreciate that very much. Welcome. Enjoy the uh, exclusive emojis. John Walker, sleepy time here on the East Coast. Have a good one. Thanks so much for popping in, John. And thanks for the donation. I very much appreciate that. Justin the Hunter saying, oof. <laughs> Nightwing is my favorite. There you go. Cool. Um, I guess since we're talking about... Can anybody guess what my favorite <laughs> Marvel superhero is? Take a shot in the dark. I don't know. Don't I? Do you? Whisper it to me. Good oh. guess. Oh, Marvel. I'm not right? No. Good guess. That's the second. Mm, mm. I know you know. Don't yell it. Okay. No, not Wolverine, Kyle. Good guess, though. Not Captain America. Not Moon Knight. He not Ant Man. He is the largest character in any in any movie, video game. Any I always game, yeah. Any. If there's an option to choose the barbarian or something similar, that's who there I choose. Go. There you go, hunting, <laughs> hunting for sharp things. The Hulk, 100. percent I mean, it's so easy to identify with him. Like you open up a cabinet and somebody left a stack of paper plates too close to the edge and it falls all over the place you know yeah i get it i understand why he throws cars at the sky like it's frustrating when, when oh, crap doesn't widow. go your That's way hulk, hulk widow a black widow. oh black I widow was, you know, um i actually like looks nice in her. i actually like black widow's character in the the marvel movies um but she's not my favorite people are still guessing um for everybody who's still guessing uh, the answer was Hulk. <laughs> Thank you. Um, which version of Hulk? Which actor? I don't know. Truthfully, um, I didn't pay much attention to the older Hulk movies. I hated the very first newer Hulk movie, the one before Edward Norton. I like one with Edward Norton. That's probably my favorite Hulk movie. They need to do a new standalone Hulk movie uh, with Mark Ruffalo. Zell's favorite Marvel character is Goku. <laughs> <laughs> That's probably my favorite superhero of all time, is Goku. Because you guys know, Dragon Ball Z fans, we, we will never admit that anybody can beat Goku. Adidas or Nike? Adidas. Walmart brand. Adidas, yeah, or Walmart, <laughs> yeah, starter. <laughs> no, but Adidas, I probably wear more Adidas than anything else. Um, let's see here. Ricky answered correctly. <laughs> Smash that like button, somebody said. <laughs> Favorite topping on a pizza? Um, favorite single topping? So favorite like pizza to order with all toppings, like if I could choose the toppings. Um, probably Canadian bacon and jalapeno. But favorite single topping on a pizza? Um, so in town we have a place called Lamato's and they put little bricks of cream cheese on your pizza. And uh, that is far and away my favorite pizza topping, is little little chunks of cream cheese. People yelling Kamehameha, that is, uh, these are my people, 100%. Bacon kind of pizza. Cool. Um, ask me five years ago, and I would have, I would have, um, like, Hulk, like, hulked out, you know, like, thrown a car at the sky over pineapples on my pizza. Anymore, I'm like, yeah, that's pretty good. That's about as far as it goes, though, you know? Pineapple pizza is a lot like, um, it's a lot like the Spyderco Delica to me. I mean, I, yeah, I get it. It's good, but that's as far as it goes. It's not going, I'm not going to say anything else more, you know, positive about it. How do you convince me to buy a wife? A knife? Oh, I almost said wife. <laughs> oh, how do I convince her to buy a wife? <laughs> I, that's not, I haven't. Um, the, uh, how do I convince her to buy a knife? When's the last time you asked? Oh boy, yeah. When's the last time I asked to buy a new wife? Um, to buy a new knife? Well, truthfully, it just you know, it's not something that really happens anymore. The deal is, is that from all from all the things I've acquired that I actually own, if I if I want to buy a new knife, I have to sell something that I own, and that's kind of a personal thing with myself, right? Besides the one I buy. yeah, and I don't sell my my wife's knives. So my wife gets me a, a new knife once a year for our anniversary. The deal is, though, is that I'm not allowed to give input. Um, she has to find it herself based on what she understands from my incessant rambling. Um, and it has yielded some amazing results. The Lion Steel TRE uh, M390 uh, in titanium was the first gift. Second one was a Microtech SOCOM Elite, the newer variants. And the third one was my Spyderco Para 3 uh, uh, Maxman. So, yeah, I trust her. So I get at least one new knife a year. But if I want a new knife, which here lately it's been like 
you know, one every month or two months, then I, I just sell something that I own and pick up something else. What? Just something you own, not necessarily a knife. Looks like you got to sell the couch to buy a new knife. <laughs> yeah, she'll come to, she comes home, she's like, where's the couch? And I'm like, I don't, I don't know, that's so weird. It was here a second ago. <laughs> um, have I seen Casablanca or the Iron Giants? Well, the Iron Giants is that movie, that, that animated movie with that kid, right? I don't know, that wasn't very descriptive. I've seen, I think I've seen the Iron Giant. Oh, yeah, you're, you're making a joke about him throwing a car into the sky. That's the funniest scene in the whole movie, because the, the car, he can't get the, the giant can't get the car horn to stop honking, and so he just chucks it into the vista. That's so funny. I laughed so hard at that the first time I saw that. Huh? What's your favorite known YouTube channel? What's my favorite known F YouTube table or YouTube channel? Um, you oh my gosh. Very few people know this, and so many of you are gonna judge me. <laughs> Alright, honesty time. My wife knows. Any guesses? Any guesses what I might watch in my free time recreationally that has nothing to do with knives? Any guesses on a YouTube channel that I might watch religiously? It has absolutely nothing to do with knives. Here's a hint. He's extremely popular. Extremely popular. And so many of you guys are going to cringe. Nobody's got it yet. Mm -mm. Think extremely popular. Like, beyond, there we go. Robert M. Yeah, I'm a PewDiePie fan. I have been for a long time. Probably six years, six, seven years. Um, and he's exactly my age. The guy's ridiculous. Hate him or love him. He's just ridiculous. Um, I, I watch him a lot. I do like bro science for sure. <laughs> I also like Cletus McFarland. Anybody ever watch Cletus, Cletus McFarland? The kid who broke the uh, world record for the uh, Corvette stick shift at uh, quarter mile? That is an insane channel. If you're big into uh, motorsports and drag racing, or if you're a GM fan or monster build, uh, fan, like kind of Frankenstein car build fan, uh, Lee, or, uh, Cletus McFarland is uh, certainly a channel you should get into. Um, nobody judged me for that at all. You did. I mean, you Sometimes I have something on, and you'll laugh, and then you'll be like, oh, no, I don't like him. <laughs> Somebody guessed the, some Kardashian crap. <laughs> <laughs> is, is Shaman or Super Freak? Super Freak is a wonderful knife, but it can't outshine the Shaman in my book. It's very biased. I think it probably comes down to the fact that the Super Freak has the uh, axis lock and the Shaman has the compression lock. Um, but uh, yeah, it's Shaman, Shaman over Super Freak, but it's not, they're not too far apart. Um, Carfection is a nice relaxing channel too. I'll have to check that one out. Would you ever upload a Dalica review slash overview? I did. You can find it in my non-knife uh, EDC gear playlist. You can find my sarcastic review of the Dalica. Um, that's, that's kind of a, a hidden gem on this channel. Sometimes you have to dig through the playlists to find the weird stuff. I, I hide things in some of them as, as jokes. The Dalica review is in non-knife uh, EDC gear reviews. Favorite music genre? Favorite music genre? Heavy metal. Um, I like older heavy metal. I like newer stuff. Metalcore, post-hardcore. Um, I like the really insane, like the weird, I mean, I like Rings of Saturn and Within the Ruins. Um, I like some deathcore. I, so, here's the thing. If it gets too much, like if it's, it sounds like a gorilla chewing on a guitar and there's no... Like, the drum beat is just insane, and there's no time signature, and it's just ridiculous. I don't really like that. But if it's progressive, and there's flow, and, you know, there's a climactic part, there's a bridge and a chorus, right? Uh, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to it. I, I do like some complexity, some chaos, but I, I love my metal, for sure. If you guys watch my Instagram stories, most of it is metal. Um, System of Down is awesome, for sure. Corn is awesome, yeah. See, I like all the in-between stuff, uh, just as much as the you know sometimes different uh, se sections of the knife community. Heavy metal people who like rock and heavy metal they argue incessantly. 
you know, I like uh, I like Kansas and I like um, Journey and I like Black Dahlia Murder too. Um, that's and I like everything in between. That's just the way that it is. Five Finger Death Punch is awesome. Sabaton, Amon Amarth for sure. The Who, uh, 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 Slipknot, and Death Clock. I love Death Clock. Bloodlines is an amazing song by Death Clock. Love it. I still work out to that to that song like on repeat. Um, what do I think of the Fanatic Edge uh, customizers? I think they're amazing. In fact, I'll tell you this. I will be purchasing Spyderco Shaman Flytanium Scales. They did make an announcement. They're finally going to do those. And I will almost immediately be sending them off to Fanatic Edge to have one side completely diamond textured. Yes, they are very trustworthy. If you guys want to um, have your knives customized by them, they are excellent. Pantera is wonderful. Meshuggah is wonderful. Absolutely. Okay, guys, it is 116. Um, or, I'm sorry, 116. It's, we've been going for an hour 16. What is wrong with me? I'm an idiot. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know what's funny? Kellen FK, I also like Tech 9 as a metal fan. There's something about Tech 9 that kind of clicks with me. I don't know what it is. Tech 9 and NF. Um, do what? Movie everyone loves that, that I hate. Okay, that's a great question to end on. Mm, let me think about this. Um, Titanic. And I know most Ew, of the people in here... That every That's like one of the most famous movies of all time. Like, if we're talking about the vast majority of people, I can't stand to watch that movie one more time because my mom and my sister, during a certain time... Um, when I was growing up, they constantly had, they were both curled up on the couch watching freaking Titanic. And I just, nah, 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 nah. and it, just that same loop, that song over and over again, and, and what's her face? It's just Jack, and she's trying to find the whistle, you know, and it's cold, whatever, just die. Just, you know, I kind of wish that one of the times I was watching movies when she might fall off of that chunk of the ship and just sink, and then the, like they couldn't watch the movie anymore. But that, I mean, you know, it was just that was just wishful thinking. Yeah, I, I just I hate Titanic. Hate it. God, but the wind is garbage. <laughs> Justin, you just you just killed my wife. She's having a heart attack. <laughs> <laughs> Oh. oh no! Oh no! <laughs> uh, all right, guys, this has been a fun live stream. Appreciate everybody stopping in. Congratulations to the new Knights of the Round. I thank you so much for your support. Everybody who donates tonight, of course. Like I said, um, we'll keep doing these live streams once a week. Um, the quarantine live streams. I'm glad you guys are enjoying them. Uh, like I said, tomorrow you will be able to enjoy my top ten ugliest folding knives video at 8 or 9 o'clock a.m. Uh, uh, Central Standard Time. I don't know where what time it's going to be for you guys. And then the Knife Guy episode 48 will be tomorrow afternoon around 2 p.m. Central Standard Time. Um, thanks so much for stopping in, everybody. Again, thanks for your support. Have a wonderful Saturday evening and a fantastic rest of your weekend. Bye. Bye.